Hey guys, Brian with Thunder Laser USA. I uh, was looking at this diagram of the wiring for the uh, 5000 series chillers for a client and I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to make a short overview of exactly how this uh, chiller operates, where some of the things are, and then we'll go over um, if you do have an alarm or you do have a failure, uh, some common things that you can look for and, and verify to make sure uh, what's going on. So we're just going to go through this. Now this is a Chinese document so it says 220. Uh, of course we're going to be dealing with 110 at 60 Hertz and this is where the power connection goes in, the input for the power supply. There's line, neutral, and protective earth or ground. And if you'll notice this is a double pole single throw switch. So when you flip it on it connects the line and the neutral. It completes both of those circuits. Uh, that's one of the points that we're going to look at. We have seen one side fail and one side not. Um, and if the right side fails, or the correct one, um, for instance if neutral fails and line uh, goes through, it can loop back and come back to the circuit and partially power it and cause weird problems. Um, but anyway, so your, your power comes in here. Uh, this switch gets clicked on and it goes through a fuse that is probably the number one thing you should always look for and then after that it powers everything that has to do with the chiller with the exception of a few 24 volt things so these are your case fans those are all wired uh, to go along with the compressor so if the compressors running the case fans are running um, all of those are AC the compressor is AC, uh, this solenoid is AC, the only things that are not AC are the water pump, the 24 volt power supply that powers the water pump and the controller is powered by 24 volt DC and there's some logic level IOs here and some logic level IOs here uh, and this relay. This part of the relay is high voltage 110 and this part of the relay is logic level so let me get rid of all of that stuff so it comes in here you turn the switch on uh, it energizes everything now when you first turn it on you get a buzzer and a red light and the reason is, is when this diagram is drawn as if it were in the off state. The switches are not engaged. There's no water flow because this circuit is not complete. And if you'll notice, these are norm normally closed positions. So that is red light and buzzer. When you energize uh, the chiller, the water pump comes on immediately. This 24 volt power supply and that water pump come on immediately. And so does the thermostat controller and for just a minute until this flow switch is able to energize when the water gets built up and the flow starts going this is going to stay closed here which is giving you an alarm output to the laser indicating a problem and it's activating the red light and the audible buzzer and as soon as the water starts flowing and this circuit right here is closed these will switch over and you'll have a good alarm signal come into the laser and the green light will come on the red light and the buzzer will go off that alarm function with the flow switch uh, works totally independently of the controller and everything else there is no trigger from this flow switch to tell the controller that there's a flow error because it really doesn't matter if the water's not flowing you're gonna get a, an error it's gonna stop the laser but your compressor circuit is still going to continue to function normally uh, and the reason is it doesn't really matter if water's not flowing the temperature's not changing so it's just going to remain idle until it gets an input from a failure or another sensor that it needs to cycle on or do something else uh, so it's really a pretty simple circuit you know you've got a classic uh, refrigeration circuit with a temperature controller um, and a couple of uh, basically one flow switch you know to handle all of the alarms uh, and the outputs so 
things to look for again are check the connections here make sure that the terminals are not uh, corroded or arced look like they've been arcing or or the plastic around them looks like it's malformed or has been heated um, check the terminals on the inside of the laser going to the connection or the chiller inside the chassis uh, and make sure that all those terminations are good uh, the power switch can fail only on one side and not the other and uh, you can toggle that switch and sometimes you know it won't uh, show uh, any evidence that it doesn't work other than you've got a problem somewhere of course numero uno let me go back to the red pin is going to be that fuse right there definitely check your fuse first thing uh, make sure your water pump uh, it's not impeded. You can uh, go to your inlet and outlet on the back of the chiller, take a short section of hose and connect those, turn your chiller back on and see if your error state goes away. That's one way to check the system just by looping the inlet and outlet uh, on the back of it with a short piece and turn on your chiller and run it and see if your problems go away. If they do, then you probably have a blockage somewhere in the laser tube or in the cooling lines or something like that. So that's a diagnostic thing you can try. Um, there's a reset procedure for the thermostat that sometimes needs to happen that's in the user's manual and you can find all of this information uh, plus service manuals and, and more at support.thunderlaserusa.com and just search for chiller in the search bar and you'll return this diagram along with lots of other resources. Anyway, I just thought I would share that with you. Uh, until next time, have a good evening.